Hey everyone, and what we're going to be looking at with this little video is basic ways to draw the iliac arteries. The iliac arteries are found in the pelvis and they're very, very complicated because they're crammed into a very tight space, but they supply a large number of organs and it's difficult to keep those straight. You can make it as complicated as you want, but we're going to try to do things in the simplest way possible. All right, draw along if you can, because that's the way you really get this down. And first thing to do is draw the common iliac artery splitting into an external and internal iliac artery. Next thing we're going to add are the branches of the external iliac right here. Very proximal one is the deep circumflex iliac artery that supplies the iliacus muscle. Next up, very close to the body walls, the inferior epigastric, which is going right on the underside or the posterior aspect of the rectus abdominis muscle. And then we're crossing this dashed line here, which is the inguinal ligament, at which point the external iliac artery magically becomes the femoral artery. And it gives off two little branches in that area, the superficial circumflex iliac and the external pudendal artery. You probably didn't see those when you dissected the lower limb, but they are small, but there. All right, next up, let's take a look at the branches of the internal iliac artery. So the internal iliac artery has branches that go anteriorly and posteriorly. We'll start with the posterior because they're a little simpler. We've got a great big superior gluteal artery going to gluteus maximus, medius minimus, etc. And ascending from this branch, we've got the iliolumbar artery, which is taking care of the, ili the iliac bone, lumbar vertebra, and the other structures and muscles like quadratus lumborum that are located nearby. And descending from this branch, we've got the lateral sacral artery, taking care of the lateral aspect of the sacrum and the little nerves that are coming out of the anterior sacral foramina. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated when you look at the anterior branching. First up is the umbilical artery. Now, the umbilical artery was what actually kept us alive when we were little developing fetuses and embryos, as we had this artery taking deoxygenated blood back to the placenta. After we're born, the stretch of it that went from the placenta dwindles, but what remains are the branches that go to the top part of the urinary bladder. These are the superior vesicle arteries. And that obliterated stretch that goes up to the umbilicus remains visible in the cadaver, but doesn't actually carry any blood. Next up is the obturator artery. It's supplying the muscles of the medial thigh and is traveling out through the obturator foramen and has a pretty long course across the true pelvis to get there and can be seen pretty readily on dissection but also traumatized pretty readily if you're not careful in the surgical field. All right, we're going to stretch the internal iliac artery down a little bit further into its terminal branches. And as we do so, we're temporarily going to ignore anything that comes off in the meantime. We're going to revisit that shortly, but right now pretend nothing comes off right here and instead let's pay attention to the terminal branches of the internal iliac. The inferior gluteal, which is again supplying the gluteal region, and the internal pudendal artery. The internal pudendal artery is taking care of the external genitalia, the anal region, which are collectively known as the perineum. Make sure you keep that separate from the peritoneum, which is the lining of the abdominal pelvic cavity. Sorry they sound similar, I didn't make that choice. But perineum is the external genitalia anal region, and this is what gives it its blood supply. Let's look at the named branches that go to the perineum. First up is the middle rectal. Then the perineal artery is going to the muscles of the perineum. And we have erectile tissues, the corpus cavernosum, the corpus spongiosum, both get their own artery, and then the penis and clitoris each have arteries on their dorsal surface, that would be dorsal artery of the penis or clitoris, no surprise there, but also vessels that go into their kind of a deeper spongy area and actually allows erection to happen. That's going to be the deep penile artery or the deep clitoral artery. So those are the perineal branches. Now, we're going to jump back and look at this area and the branches that come off in between the obturator and the terminus of the internal iliac. And the reason we're going to separate those is because they are different between men and women. If you know what's on the screen right now, you've got the unisex pelvic blood supply. And the male and female 
versions of it are just modifications of this existing scheme. So if you've got this, you've got most everything you need to know. Let's go look at what makes the men and women's arterial supply different. So we'll shade in the green area here, take that out. So for men, we have to have the three male internal genital organs supplied by blood. The inferior vesicle artery gives off the artery to the prostate and the seminal vesicles. And way up here, I didn't color it in, is the superior vesicle artery that's going to the bladder. It has a branch that goes down and supplies the vas deferens, also known as the ductus deferens. So think of the three male genital organs and you've got the prostate, the seminal vesicles, the ductus deferens. The lower two are coming off the inferior vesicle artery. The more superior of the bunch is coming off the superior vesicle artery. Let's take a look at female blood supply. This is actually not too difficult. Essentially you've got a uterus, you have a vagina, and they need blood. That's coming off the internal iliac. However, this little shaded area here is showing that there's a lot of anastomosis between the uterine artery and the vaginal artery, and you have to be very cognizant that you've taken care of all the blood supply during a hysterectomy to make sure that the significant blood supply isn't still leaking out into the cavity. There's not a separate inferior vesicle artery in women, but a small branch off the vaginal does take care of the underside of the urinary bladder. All right, so here is the summary slide looking at branches of the iliac artery in the male. Make sure you can see the differences here and here with the summary slide of blood supply to the female. Our final slide is going to be showing us some of the variations that occur commonly in this area. Arteries are not happy unless they get to have some variability to make us nuts. And one thing to remember is arteries are named for where they go, not where they branch from. So the same name applies to an artery coming off of one place or another so long as it's supplying a particular region. For example, the medial thigh is supplied by the obturator artery and generally it comes off the internal iliac artery, but every so often it does not. Instead, it comes off the external iliac and heads out through the obturator foramen right from there. This is something you need to be aware of in the cases of uh, trauma to the pubis bones, which is crossing. This pretty substantial order can be lacerated right there. And likewise, if you can't find the obturator coming off your internal iliac, you might want to look for it coming off your external. The last variable is the inferior gluteal artery. Instead of coming off like it usually does as a branch of the internal iliac, sometimes comes off as a common trunk with its buddy, the superior gluteal, right there. Now, there are other variable methods that uh, blood supply can follow to get different places, but those are the two biggies that you might want to be aware of that is going to help save you a little bit of time in the lab. Hope this has been helpful, and see you soon. Bye-bye.